Sydney makes her bid for a little piece of history. Hello and welcome to the run of the race. Brittany Taylor and Mark Warwood with you to review everything that happened on Thousand Guineas and Lex Piper Day. And Mark, it was dominated by the Cerise and White in the back part of the meeting. Yeah, they won the two feature races and they also won the last race as well. So Grant and Alana Williams, Peter's Investments and William Pike with a race to race to race treble. Quite an achievement there. Let's start at the very beginning. Let's have a look at the opener where Bella's Idol was the victorious one at double figure odds. Royal Strata in the middle and someday one day is back last of all. So Avidus can't get away from Discoville for the moment. Out three wide Paddy Shadow put under pressure. Not again get, Ken takes off four wide. New Age looks for a run then Bella's Idol. Express flirt and further back Royal Strata and someday one day. So Avidus comes into the straight. Leads by one. New Age trying to get off the inside. Disco Discoville is battling on and then came Bella's Idol, not again Ken, Express Flirt the inside, inside the 200, Avidus is just in front, Bella's Idol's coming and also New Age Express Flirt the inside, hitting the front, Bella's Idol though from New Age Express Flirt and Bella's Idol is one. Bella's Idol recording an overall figure there of minus 3.4, pretty nice result there for Bella's Idol, who makes the finals, Mark? Yeah, look, Bella's Idol does. I think it's the follow horse out of this. The bias came off two starts ago, was held up last start, uh, had the fastest last 200 metres to win on Saturday and wasn't missed. Both you and Pete Antonis tipped this horse at a big price. The forget horse is Discoville. That's its 10th consecutive unplaced run since winning a graduation over the 1,600 metres back in April of last year. And I'm willing to forgive Avidus here. I think the tempo was too slow. I know it was minus 2.2, which is relatively fast, but I think Avidus needed to go a lot faster than that, certainly with the claim as well for Molly Clark. It didn't really play to his strengths. And his late sectionals, particularly over the last 200 metres in races, are never that great. He needed to break the field up. And we know last start it was a much quicker tempo than that as well. All right, let's have a look at the second race. And speaking of horses that can uh, run off tempo, well, this horse, Hoboken, was last and absolutely flew home. It's over on the inside at the 600 metre mark. Copper Fury has got the lead by a half. On the outside is Sterling Estate. Secret Assault inside of Don't Fuss. She's vital three wide. Night Voyage is trucking into it in the middle but needs clear running. Out very wide is Kennedy. Hoboken tries to track it. Rapasada got up on the inside behind Secret Assault and last of all is Speeding Comet. In the straight they run and Copper Fury got away. By a length and a half Sterling Estate struggling. Getting up on the inside now. Uh, coming with a run is Secret Assault. Don't Fuss is there and now down the outside is Hoboken with a blistering run. Have a look at Hoboken steaming down the outside. Race to Don't Fuss. And not Hoboken flying home from last to win there but few hard luck stories. Yeah, Night Voyage, he's uh, got a stack of weight, this horse. I did sack him last time, just simply because I think he's gone up too much in the ratings to be winning. But uh, I think the big uh, forgive horse here is Speeding Comet. Went back from the gate for Jade McNaught. Fastest from the six to the four and the four to the two, but hit some traffic problems. It was only the sixth fastest in that last 200 metres. I think it's both the forgive and the follow horse. Has been slaughtered a few times. His preparation has either been wide or a little bit of pilot error due a change of luck. And I think we'll be winning one of these graduations. The forget horse, oh look, there's a few here probably. Sterling Estate I'm gonna pick out. Was second at the 600 metre mark in what was a moderately run race. Slow sectionals all the way home. Hasn't won since January of last year. Okay, let's have a look at race number three where Captain Sterling started your favourite but uh, yeah, Darty just made it a little bit harder for that horse to cross to the fence. They ran minus 2.9 to the 600 but ultimately, it was damn ready running over the top. It's a good run. Yeah, Darty restrains now, and Captain Sterling eventually crossed. Or he's in trouble there with Yeah, Darty. Might have hit the rail. Seeker moved him powerfully into fourth place. Neurological's always been deep, and then damn ready travelling up okay. And last of all is Dutch Spy. So Captain Sterling tries to slip him on the turn, leads a half length. Two I'm incredible. Here's Seeker letting go with a run. Yeah, Darty gets going again. Snow Lord got badly hampered near the inside, and then damn ready who's putting in down the centre inside the 250 seeker has raced to captain sterling but damn ready joined in it's seeker and damn ready damn ready the outside of seeker damn ready takes the lead and damn ready beats seeker a minus 6.6 .6 for damn ready that would be a personal best for this mark besto galloper yeah certainly the follow horse out of this race he's had the fastest sectionals 
been running really, really well, like most of those horses in the Bearstow colours, has had excuses for the defeats, and he's a weight carrier as well. And I think that's significant here because it was a 76 plus event. He carried 57. He's going to go up in the ratings. I think he can carry weight to win again. The forget horse is Captain Sterling. That's its latest poor performance at Ascot. Maybe this horse is just simply a 1,000 Pinjarra straight horse. I suppose we'll find out. And the forgive horse, willing to forgive, yeah, Darty. was first up without a trial, got galloped on around the 600 metre mark as well and carried three and a half kilos more than any other horse in this race. Certainly one to uh, forgive there. All right, let's have a look at race number four. And for mine, it was one of the highlights of the day. It was Adam Ferry training his first Saturday winner with Cheston Flyer. Fifth the inside from the escort. Zatorio very patiently ridden, but travels OK. And two lengths away, last of all, is Counter Cap. Up to the turn. Lord Ludlow has been able to work to the front. Ionix dropped back. Moving up Diablo strongly on the outside for Pike now. Then Cheston Flyer coming around gets to the outside. Zatorio is going to be very wide. Family discussion just off them. In the straight. Lord Ludlow, Diablo, Cheston Flyer. And down the outside is coming around. But it's Diablo hitting the front. Cheston Flyer. And coming around is down the outside. Diablo just in front of Cheston Flyer. Coming around is coming late. Diablo, Cheston Flyer. Coming around. Cheston Flyer. Chest and, Chest and Flyer. Flyer recording an overall figure of plus 2.7. Only moderate figures here, Mark. Yeah, it wasn't a great race, but I think Chest and Flyer is probably the follow horse out of it. I think Adam Ferry, like punters, he's trying to work out this galloper's best distance, but he's still eligible for this grade, and I think that is quite significant. So Chest and Flyer, I think, is the horse to follow. The forget horse is Ionix, finished last in this race. The pads had come off as well, so that you thought would have been a positive. Third at the 600 before the slow sectionals all the way home and was beaten by D-Day and Counter Cat, who both went round at triple figure odds. The Forgive Horse, not one of mine, this is coming around, still yet to run a really good figure according to Punting Forms data. Did over race on Saturday and was the fastest closer in what was the photo finish. I'm just a little bit wary. Okay, coming around. I, I think it is one of mine, but yeah, just want to see it. Uh perform on the day. All right, that is the first four races done. On the, after this break, we'll have a look at the Cerise and White domination that was the back half of the meeting. Think all betting companies hold their profits? Not Tab Touch. Not only do we give you a better betting experience on your mic, but out here, a portion of every bet funds a better racing industry. Helps better your race club. Come on! Oh! And helps better local sport. Hey, guys. Don't let the game play you. Stay in control. Gamble responsibly. Welcome back to the run of the race where we are up to race number five. And punters had this pegged as a race between Santiago Gal and Macroy. It turned out to be exactly that way. This time, it was Santiago Gal getting the upper hand. Out three wide, going up in the middle, Star Glitter travelled OK. See me sizzle, Macroy tracks into it beautifully, right on the back of Princess Zelda. Then came Kiwanzo Jazari, is back near the tar with Fringe. Coming around the home turn though, and De Andes is just in front of San Diego Girl. Princess Zelda's under a lot of pressure. Macroy's out wide, a Star Glitter is coming through in the middle. And more races, McNaught goes back to the inside, is running on as well. Inside the 250 though, hitting the front is San Diego Girl. Here's Macroy. More races the inside. Santiago Girl just in front. Macroy can't get there. Santiago Girl punched out has beaten Macroy. More races. Santiago Gal defeating Macroy there. Last time it was Macroy winning but this time it was all about Santiago Gal. Yeah and I think uh, she is the follow horse out of this race. She did over race early in the race on Saturday but she made that progression from third first up to second second up to winning third up and turned the tables on Mac Roy. So she is the follow horse. I'm willing to forgive Mac Roy. Another good run from this horse. Shifted inwards about 200 metres from home. He's clearly not the easiest of rides. I know Kate Winton has been getting on really well with her, but uh, has been winning in spite of a few issues. And the forget horse, it has to be fringed here. Settled ninth of 10, then came home with the slowest sectionals as well. Its latest effort, this is just simply nowhere near metropolitan standard. Clearly better off in the country. All right, now let's have a look at uh, one of the feature events of the day. It was the Thousand Guineas, and it was taken out by adornment. 
And back last of all is Speedy Miss, two lengths away and ten off the leader. Up before the turn, and Brilita five leads ahead. On the outside, Ping Me Another moves up. Out three wide, Princess Piero. Every chance for a dormant still needs clear running as they corner. And then Vintage Stock, the inside, and Dark Choice. A set tray's taken out wide, and Speedy Miss is wider. A dormant's out now into the clear. At the 250, the bolter, Ping Me Another. On the inside, Brilita five, Vintage Stock coming through. A dormant joins in on the outside. Brilita Leader five. A dormant joins in strongly. Pick me another in vintage stock. Look at Pike going to work. A dormant grabbed the lead. Drew clear and a dormant has won from vintage stock. A dormant winning the thousand guineas there. But Mark, this is a tricky race to assess because they absolutely walked. Impossible race. You've got to put a pen through it, I think, uh, for future form analysis. Looking at the file, I will forgive a set show. Slow tempo certainly didn't suit this horse. Fastest sectionals and did carry more weight than all of her rivals. Still have a massive query about her though. The forget horse is Princess Piero. All those good two-year-old runs have been undone by what she's doing as a three-year-old. Slow sectionals and while she was wide, the fact that they went so slow, I think mean being wide was totally meaningless. The follow horse, a dormant, she won the race. You can only beat what you race against. Clearly the best of the field here, but the tempo was absolutely ridiculous. And uh, Brilletta Five finished third. I don't think we'll see that horse black type placed ever again. And uh, just to give you a bit of an idea, 13.7, so over 13.7 lengths above benchmark was to the 600. So that is absolutely walking. Overall, a dormant's run a figure of plus 9.5, but her best figure that she's ever recorded, according to punting form, is minus 2.2. So she's certainly probably better than what she recorded on the weekend. But as you said, you can only race what you're... Uh, what the tempo sets. She's the horse you'd back eating the oaks out of that field, but uh, really, uh, in terms of certainly further down and, and attributing a, a great deal to the seconds and the thirds and the fourths of this world, I think it's fraught with danger. Yes, and uh, we always talk about who's better going into these oaks and derbies, fillies or the colts and geldings. At the moment, a dormant, the best figure she's run is minus 2.2, and Regal Power, the best his run, is right around that benchmark. So. That brings us to the next race, which is the Lex Piper. Let's have a look at Regal Power winning. His final hearing, Regal Power, is about six off the leader, then Classic Jack inside of Platoon in the Parnham Colours. And last of all is Fred Dagg. They come up towards the home turn with 600 to go. And out in front, Blackwood River just snuck away a little bit. Lakeview and Stars running second from Creative Hero. Here's Regal Power now. He's letting go out four deep with a run and slice bread. Tries to get up on the inside. And behind them is final hearing, racing inside the 250. Regal Powers putting in down the outside and Fred Dagg's come from last with a brilliant run. Fred Dagg has raced up to Regal Power. He goes with him. Regal Power and Fred Dagg. A ding-dong go. Regal Power, Fred Dagg. But Pike, he usually... Regal Power winning there. Now, we just discussed between Adornment and Regal Power's personal best. There's about two lengths in favour of Adornment. But on this particular occasion, on Saturday, it was Regal Power that came up with the better figure. Certainly did. Uh, look, I think this race is not an inconclusive one because of the tempo. They, uh, they did set walked in the Phillies race, they kind of jogged in this one, I would say. They went about eight or five lengths slower than benchmark to the 600. Looking at the file, the forgive horse is Fred Dagg. Frasty sectionals from last at the 600 all the way home. He beat all by the excellent winner. So Fred Dagg, Bruce Watkins has got a nice horse there. The forget horse is Lakeview and Star, overrated for mine. I've been saying this for a little while, a bit like his full relation Arctic Stream. Did race quite firstly early on, but no excuse really for the performance. The follow horse, I think his regal power here, accelerated not just once, but twice in the straight. I, I remarked on the day, it was almost as if William Pike needed wing mirrors to see where Fred Dagg was. But uh, when Fred Dagg loomed to Regal Power, Regal Poon kicked again. I think he's the better horse. I think that was the most impressive thing because Fred Dagg absolutely came at Regal Power so quickly. But mm -hmm. to Regal Power's credit, really stuck his head out. All right, for the last of the day, it was forceful winning. And uh, this horse, they've they said it's been a bit of a work in progress, but I think the good tempo suited him. Red publisher going up in the middle. Grey Enigma's out wide. Getting up on the inside is Friar Rest. Now looking for a run behind them. Forceful's about seven off the lead. Ms. Leckie tries to get to the outside. Frio just ahead of it. And then Dark Royalty and further back is Harry Thomas coming up to the turn. Debelacio about to let go on the outside. Has raced up to rock on Tommy. Forceful's out wide getting into the clear but in the meantime, Friar Eskers burst clear as well. Racing inside the 250. Friar Eskers raced up, hit the front. Here's Forceful, though, finishing brilliantly. Wow, Pike, he's got the treble. Forceful has won from Friar Eskers.
best. The leader was travelling minus 2.6 in that race and I think that just allowed Forceful to find a nice rhythm. They've said that they've been doing so much work just to get this horse to settle and it seemed to work on Saturday. Yeah, nice win for those punters at Back Pike in the last. He did it yet again eight times at Ascot this season. Doesn't make the foal. The forgive horse, there was plenty I thought you could forgive here. Frio, Western Temple, Harry Thomas, Peppy Jack. But I'm going to forgive Ms Leckie. Was impeded in the straight, finished third. That was a pretty good run by Ms Leckie. The forget horse, he is not one of mine. He is Deb Alasio. He won two starts ago because of a very good ride by uh, Daniel Stake. Had the apprentice on, on Saturday. I just don't think he's all that good. The follow horse and the data screams this horse. It's friar -esque. Incredibly incredible data. The fastest splits from the 12 to the 10, eight, 10 to the 8, 8 to the 6, 6 to the 4 and 4 to the 2. That is quite remarkable. A very good second up effort. Did fade over the last 200 metres but considering she was the fastest horse in each of those splits. That was a remarkable effort. You make a very compelling case and I think I want to be on Friar mm. S next up because of it. Alright, let's have a look at the meeting in its entirety and uh, who recorded the over best overall for the day? In form Mark Bairstow with Dam Ready. So both the overall rating and the class rating for Dam Ready and we mentioned in the analysis of that race. This horse is a proven weight carrier so if he ends up with about 60 kilos in the next race I wouldn't be put off backing him at all and Mitchell Pateman who rides a horse is absolutely flying. Looking at the closing sectionals, Hoboken the fastest over the last 200, Fred Dagg over the 400, a bit of an eye catcher in the Lex Pipe and back to Hoboken for the last 600 so that was a very good win by the Neville Parnham train galloper. Both horses very eye catching in their runs so no surprises to see them uh, feature in the fastest closing sectionals. We'll take a quick break and on the other side of this we'll be looking at the tip star of the week. At Tab Touch, our bettering department comes up with new ways to better your betting experience. Like putting better features at your fingertips, such as Sky Racing and Super Pick. But if you think we're just doing what every other betting company does, think again. Because we're also giving a portion of every bet to fund a better racing industry. And better your local. So better your bet with Tab Touch. Don't let the game play you. Stay in control. Gamble responsibly. Welcome back to the run of the race. Let's have a look at the tipping competition as it stands after round six. And on Saturday, you could sort of get in, get out early. The best result would have been tipping uh, the opener and that would have been Bella's Idol. Yeah, Bella's Idol paid $16.50 and $3.10 for the place with Tab Touch. Hoboken in race number two was almost as good. Dan Reddy paid well. Cheston Flyer, Santiago Gal. Then in the feature races, the two favourites won. So you were looking for the place horses in Brilletta 5 and Fred. Dag and then in the last pike in the last forceful he would have got just over 2,100 points. Let's have a look at what our winner has tipped Mark Bowden and this is a member I believe. Yeah another member wins the tipping competition so he had three winners on the day Bella's Idol, Chest and Flyer and Forceful. Also had Dutch Spy in the third race paid six dollars so really good tip in there from Mark 1,374 points wins the prize. Let's have a look if that catapults him onto the leaderboard at all and unfortunately he's going to have to do a little bit more work because it doesn't quite see him get into our uh, top eight. Yeah even though there was more than 2,000 points up for grabs on Saturday not a great deal of movement in that top eight. Gray's Guns is still the leader here 4,875 points Round number seven is on Saturday. And they'll get their next chance on Supremacy Stakes Day, which is this Saturday. Let's have a look at the last three editions of the Supremacy Stakes. It has been dominated by Simon Miller. Westbrook led them at the 250 from Chin Strap. Harvey was forced to go for the whip on Lusaha. It's Whispering Brook when they went by the 150, getting away from Chin Strap. Lusaha. Whispering Jack over Hurricane Jack on the inside is next, but Whispering Brook pulls away, and Whispering Brook makes a great return. is the Sebring filly, Ciani, and she's coming with a wet sail at the 150, and look at Ciani, she stormed up, grabbed the lead from Keith McKean, she's pulling away, a great victory in the Supremacy Stakes first up, Ciani pulled away to beat Keith McKean, South Jack was third. Going up just behind them, Lady Cosmology called upon Tapper. 
struggle by Agent Pippa. Here comes Princess Piero around their heels, but Lady Cosmology found at the 100 mark. She shook off Agent Pippa, Princess Piero, and the debutante comes away to give Simon Miller another supremacy win and a great day for Lady Lady Cosmology winning the most recent edition of the Supremacy Stakes. It's a great lead up to the Karakata. Certainly is and Simon Miller I think will be well represented again on Saturday because he's got such a bunch of talented two year olds. So looking to see what Simon's got going around in the listed race. Looking forward to that. All the racing action kicks off at 12.39 on Saturday. Make sure you get out to Ascot and if you don't, well, we'll see you next week on the run of the race. She makes her bid for a little piece of history.